Hey, it's Sheldon McDonald here, uh, recording segment two of my animation plugin. Um, what we're going to do today is just go over the actual animation editor itself. I'm going to explain all the buttons and uh, I'll do another video um, showing you how to use your new animated model through code and how to change through animations uh, smoothly. Uh, so we're going to load the SWAT guy that I uh, rigged together yesterday. Okay. Um, I've already done a walk animation with this, but I'll just go through it and explain how I did it and uh, explain all the features of this uh, editor. Okay. So you've basically already guessed uh, open model is to open a saved model. Save is to save your, your project uh, model. New model is to start from fresh. Clear the scene. Okay. So we can open up the SWAT guy back in. Um, on this side, we've got set image. So if we have a limb selected, uh, right now we're currently on limb zero, which is not a limb. You can't edit it, so don't try. <laughs> um, and you can't load an object into limb zero either. Uh, so limb one, I have it selected. I can say set image. And really, if I um, if I set an image to it, uh, then it'll automatically texture it. Um, if you load an object, it will erase the one that you currently have loaded and replace it with the new one that you load in. So now you can see it's put a gun in place of where that guy's waist should have been. Uh, we're going to put his waist back in. <laughs> okay, so now you can see we need to texture it as well. So we load the texture in and set it. Uh, flush objects. Uh, what this does, uh, in your sandbox folder under my documents, uh, if we look in there, uh, currently under the editor, if we go to media, We've got all these OBJ files that were used to create the OB2 file. So I'm just going to go through this. I'm going to hit flush objects, clean my documents folder, say OK. This also clears the scene, OK. Delete all the object files, yes. OK, so you'll notice it cleared my scene. And if we go to this folder in media, it completely erased all the OBJ files. Now we're left with a SWAT guy.ob2 and his image file. So now if I go open model, SWAT guy, load, now what's happened is it's extracted all the files from the ob2 file to work with. Okay? Um, so it's good to clear that when you're working on a fresh model so you don't have additional limbs that shouldn't be here that you might accidentally choose from. Okay, um, so that's that. Um, your ground height is just a reference model used to adjust the approximate height of the ground for you to be able to do animations correctly. Okay, so if you're doing a jump animation, you might want to make sure that he actually touches the ground again or if he's dying you might want him to actually die and hit the ground and not actually be floating or go under the ground accidentally in your animation um, so that's what that's there for it's also there is a nice reference to tell you hey north is for that character if you press uh, if you move on the local Z of the, that object, he's going north, okay? Uh, if he's not set up that way, you might want to do a quick rotation to fix his limbs. So on limb one, you'll notice I did a rotation fix on his waist. Uh, since every object in the end is attached to his waist, uh, it modifies everything. 
so it doesn't you don't have to rotate everything manually just the waist um, the way the parent child relationship works um, if you look at limb one is it's parent is limb zero okay that means if zero is moved limb one moves with it we're going to cycle through these uh, limbs using the arrow keys up and down left and right goes through the frames so if i press up i'm now on limb two it says that its parent limb is one so if that were true if i did any modifications to limb one it would also affect limb two okay um, if we look at limb three it says its parent is limb two so if I in fact modify limb two, then limb three must be affected. Let's see if that's true. Um, we'll change his rotation for his waist. Um, you can see that it's taking all the limbs attached to it, okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to put that back to, actually, I'm just going to reload it. That's the easiest way to fix it. Um, that's how the limb parent works. You can, you might be able to set a parent as a limb that doesn't even exist. I hope I coded something to catch that. I think I did. But if uh, you try to attach it to a limb that doesn't exist, some crazy things might happen. So try not to do that. Um, okay, um, so we went over those. Position is basically the offsets of your model limbs, okay? And the rotation is the uh, local rotations of the object uh, according to your base pose. Um, so right now it says we're, we're basically zero rotation on everything. If we flip through to frame one and we look at one of the limbs that's actually modified, um, we can see uh, this guy's upper arm, his right upper arm, has actually got some rotation values. If we go to frame zero, oops, apparently I'm clicking on stuff. Um, you can see that it goes back to zeros, but you can see his offsets are there, okay? His offsets are unchanged at this frame, so they sit at zero. Um, that's how those work. Um, play is to play your animation. Copy is to copy a frame. Um, say we like this pose here. I can copy it. I can flip down the road here. We'll paste it here. And that frame will be there okay that's how that works you can erase a pose at any given time I can just hit erase here and it replaces it with the base pose okay um, your frame is can be anywhere from 0 to 30 um, frame 0 is your base pose uh, start and end you want to use to test your animation out and you can modify the speed from 0.01 to 1.0, I believe. Um, I think that pretty much goes over the editor itself. There's not much to it. Um, it's really just up to you to link the limbs together and do the rotations and, uh, for to, and the offsets to do the animations. Um, if we're testing my walk animation right now, I'm going to set this from 1 to 5, I think it was. And if I press play, he's doing his walk animation. Okay. We can speed that up. Oh. Okay. That's basically how that works. Uh, this model is going to be included with uh, my editor now as an example to showcase how, uh, how I made this work. 
you can you're free to use the model if you have purchased dark matter one from TGC um, if you haven't then you are not permitted to use this model um, use it as a reference to to see how animations are done um, try it in a little test program to see if this will work for you and if it does great purchase it and uh, you can recreate uh, all these uh, characters um, from the dark matter one pack and in fact I think I was actually planning on converting all these files for TGC so if you actually purchase uh, this model pack from TGC you'll be able to uh, get all these models pre-rigged you will just have to animate them yourself I'll, I'll do this one animation here but uh, it's an awful lot of work to do a bunch of animations so we'll let that uh, stay custom all I'm gonna do is rig all the characters for use with AGK using my plugin and I'll upload those files to TGC and if you've purchased dark matter one then you will have access to that to those files uh, once I finish them probably give me a couple weeks though because uh, it's actually quite a bit of work um, of course if you want to dive into it you've seen my first video how it's done or you want to use your own models to try rigging together and animating uh, perfect um, hopefully these videos have helped some um, I'll do another video on actually using this model with code in an actual AGK project. Alright, thanks for watching.